its acceptability, our likeness, its economic, uh, different uses, multiple uses, and the, uh, uh, of course economics is there because uh, uh, if we consider uh, the total world trade of mango, it is around ten million dollar. So you all know that a brief of uh, the systematics or the general information pertaining to mango is belong to an Acadiaci family. One thing I want to emphasize here, because there is certain confusion over this, that some of the varieties, like Velai Columban from southern part of the country, was reported to have octoplidae. And earlier it was told that uh, the basic chromosome number in mango is 10. And if you recall the paper published by Mukherjee et al. long back, they have given different chromosome, uh, basic chromosome number 7, 8, 9, 10 all, in different species of mango. But now it is ascertained that the basic chromosome number is 20. And it is a diploid, amphidiploid. So even in case of Villay Columban also, we have certain published or uh, uh, scientific evidences are available, which is clearly indicating that it is a diploid one. Then uh, genome size, uh, Regarding uh, mango genomics, uh, yesterday Dr. N.K. Singh was here and he discussed so many things. So I am part of his team. Basically he is our leader who is taking care of all genomics work, uh, especially in case of mango. And from our division, Division of Fruits and Horticulture Technology, myself and our head of the department, Dr. S.K. Singh, we are part there. Uh, this thing he also emphasized that uh, we, we, uh, we know from literature, we know that uh, the origin place is Indo-Burma region, Indo-Myanmar region. But there are uh, some evidences available which is indicating the origin of mango in India, especially in Meghalaya. Uh, and uh, people found around 65 million old fossil of mango leaf from Tura area of Meghalaya. So being a perennial fruit crop, the breeding in, case in mango is quite different from what we are knowing about cereals and millets. There are several inherent problems associated with the perennial fruit trees, which is not in case of cereals, which are of short duration crops. Uh, if I talk about uh, uh, development of mapping population, it is quite difficult in case of perennial fruit trees because you know that the gestation period or the juvenility is there. So if you want to develop a uh, pure line or inbred, in case of perennial fruit trees like uh, mango, you need 50, 60 years. And there is another problem that if you are keep on selfing, there will be inbreeding depression because it is highly cross-pollinated crop. Second thing is, suppose you have taken dasheri as uh, uh, your variety to make it homogeneous, the very first generation you will self it, the very basic identity of the dashari will be lost. Because whatever dashari as a phenotype you talk, the fruit quality, the canopy architecture, all those things are result of a elite combination of heterozygous and homozygous genes available in that. So once you are disturbing that particular, you are disturbing the identity of that particular variety. So it will be seedling type, it will not be the sherry in the very first generation. So all these problems are there. So I have listed some of them, like long juvenile phase is there, high heterozygosity is there, heavy fruit drop is there, especially in case of mango. Mango is also uh, doing breeding work in mango is tedious because here per fruit we are getting one seed. In contrast to this, if we talk about pomegranate or guava, it is easy you pollinate a single flower, you may get 200 seeds. So very easy to progress in terms of populations. Then uh, complexities with the flower and panicle, there are self-incompatibility reported. Even if we talk about the panicles, there is complexity, their orientation, their openness, uh, the, the concentration of male flowers and uh, these hermaphrodite flowers, all these things are making it difficult to go for hybridization or emasculation in case of mango. Then polyembryony is there and polyembryony is in some way it is very good thing in case of mango. If we want to perpetuate a particular genotype or we want to continue with the same genotype, 
it is good. Means for multiplication purpose, it is good. But if you are uh, looking for a gigotic embryo, it is somewhat creating problem because we do not have any foolproof uh, technology to discriminate the to differentiate between gigotics and new cellars. Though there are several reports, uh, isogyms, some morphological markers are there, but none of them are so robust that they can differentiate in all sort of polyembryonic varieties as far as the differentiation of uh, this uh, gigotics from the new cellars are concerned. Then uh, genetics of important traits are not known. Uh, suppose uh, I am uh, simply asking you why you like mango. Can you reply it? The reply is very simple because it is sweet and very aromatic and uh, very delicious fruit. And if the fruit is not sweet, you won't like to eat it. Better you will prefer to go for pickling, pickle preparation. So whatever traits from consumer point of view is there, we should have some idea about the genetics of that trait. Then only we can improve it. But unfortunately, I'm sorry to say that in case of mango, we are not that much advanced as we are in case of apple and temperate fruit crops. Then study on interspecific crossability is very less. There are 69 species reported in case of mango. And if you talk about India, we have five, six. The uh, maximum number of species are available in the Malayan, uh, Malaysia. But uh, the studies pertaining to transfer of uh, traits from uh, some other species into Indica is very less. Though we have started IHR people, they are also doing work. Even Queensland University, Dr. Bailey is there. They are working on this. But we are in a very, um, means uh, in a very buddy stage, we are. We do not have that much uh, information as far as uh, intercrossability or the utilization of different species of Mangifera genus is concerned. Then gene sources for important traits are lacking. Uh, if you recall, the anthrac nose, some black spot is coming on the fruit. And this particular disease is causing huge economic losses as far as mango is concerned on all stages of plant growth. Whether it is a, a panicle or vegetative growth is there or developing fruits are there, even after harvesting, 30-40% loss is there, post-harvest losses are there. But we do not have any source in Indica. The only resistance source reported for anthracnose is Mangifera laurina. And that is not available with us. It is available with the Australians and USDA people. They have this and uh, we also tried uh, uh, in past for getting that germplasm. But uh, unfortunately due to this or that reason we could not get that one. We are behind that. Then uh, there is dearth of information as far as genomic resources are concerned. I will show one slide that is uh, uh, that uh, that slide I prepared in 2016, and I tried to retrieve the genome resources or genomic information from NCBI database, and there were only few thousand ESTs were reported that time, and uh, three four. Published reports were there where they have uh, developed the microsatellite markers and that much information was there. And can you imagine with this uh, less uh, or meager information, we can proceed in case of mango as far as genomics. But uh, it is a very happy moment for all of us that in last one decade, lots of development has be, uh, taken place as far as genomics of mango is concerned. I will discuss that also. Uh, actually, I'm trying to discuss what exactly we are doing here and supplementing the information what globally happening there. But mainly I will be concentrating on what type of work we are doing and where we are. In fact, as far as mango breeding is concerned. So this you all know that uh, what traits we are looking, what should be the objective for mango improvement. Of course, regularity, then precocity, dwarf tree architecture, improved fruit quality. And one thing which is not mentioned in any literature or book, that is wider adaptability. 
Why I am emphasizing this wider adaptability here? You take the example of Alfonso and it is one of the best variety globally. And there are certain, certain, uh, certain inherent uh, properties are there. With this Alfonso like uh, stable flavor is there, shelf life is there, uh, slicing capability and all those things are there. That's why it is uh, a very good variety as far as mango. Then why we all are not cultivating Alfonso throughout country? If it is a way. The reason is that Alfonso has a very narrow adaptability. <laughs> And the best quality of Alfonso we are getting only in Ratnagiri or Sindurg area, Konkan area. And we also have plants of Alfonso here, but we are not getting. The side is small, that flower aroma is not there. So that type of narrow adaptability we have to break. And we want a variety which perform equally well in, uh, under all sort of agroecological reasons. Then... Uh, some of the students, they, they, they always ask what pulp percentage we should take as a threshold value for, for selecting a prosny or not selecting. That's why I, I kept some of the traits which is important for mango, those who are going to work in mango, like size. So 200-250 gram is considered as ideal mango. But uh, this is reported by Aran Singh in his book published from ICR. Now, if you see the, uh, the uh, literature or the chapter in Lid's book, the mango botany production and uses, they have given 350 gram. <coughs> then appearance is there. Uh, here I want to tell that uh, if we talk about the consumer preference of Indian origin or from uh, uh, neighboring countries, our preference uh, is somewhat different what people prefer in mango uh, from, uh, from American uh, consumers point of view or Japanese uh, or European consumers are there. Their preference is somewhat different from what we like in case of mango. We like very sweet varieties, but they don't like very sweet varieties. They like less sweet and there should be a blend of sugar and acid. Aroma is another thing and they give more weightage to color of the fruit, the skin, outer appearance of the fruit. But we, we are not giving that much uh, wettage to the color of the fruit. We like only it should be sweet and aromatic, definitely. So uh, keeping in view the export potential of mango from our country, this trait is equally important and uh, taking uh, this point in consideration, we have wow. modified our objectives in late 90s and uh, we, we included one objective in our mango breeding program that was to develop development of a uh, variety having preferably having red peel color and then fiberlessness tss is another thing so here 18 or above 18 is good we are selecting those hybrid pulp percentage near about 70 percent then sugar acid ratio, pulp color is there, and free from internal dis disorders. Uh, these are some of the traits for rootstock breeding in case of mango. Of course, the, if you are going for rootstock, it should be polyembryonic, wider adaptability, dwarfing, abiotic stress resistance, all these things are there. Uh, I want to tell about the breeding program globally happening. So what is their objective? If we talk about Australia, they are mainly concentrating on one variety, improvement of one variety that is Kensington. And they are trying to incorporate or impart all good traits in Kensington itself. Uh, very recently I saw one, uh, one uh, news and that was viral on WhatsApp that uh, uh, they have released one new hybrid. Uh, that is the improved one over this Kensington. It is a small fruit, a small in size, but uh, highly colored and uh, uh, dwarf tree stature is there. So many traits were given, I, I have not included. If we talk about Israel, they are concentrating on rootstock breeding mainly. Then Brazil is working on mango decline, which is a serious problem now, nowadays in our country also. 
then USA they are in addition to other trades they are also looking for adaptation and Pakistan their breeding objective is almost similar as ours and Kenya they are looking for a variety which is having extended period of harvest. So from here I will start when breeding was started at IRI, what were the objective. So breeding was started, systematic breeding was started at IRI in 1961. And that time the very basic objective of our breeding program was to develop a regular bearing variety. The reason was majority of the North Indian varieties like Langra, the Sherry, Chausa, Bombay Green, they were suffering from the phenomena of alternate bearing. So just to impart regularity in our North Indian varieties, we started breeding program. And that time we took advantage of two South Indian varieties. Uh, one was Bangalore, another one was Neel. So that we included as uh, parents in our breeding program. And uh, later we discontinued this Bangalore because there was uh, uh, means prominent beak was there which was not considered as a desirable trait for development of a table purpose variety and, uh, uh, and they found that uh, wherever they are making crosses either uh, taking as female or male this prominent beak is coming in the prosny means indicating it is a dominant trait. So we continued with this neelam and we released, two, uh, uh, we released two varieties one Malika in the year 1971 and Amrapali in 79. Then uh, our, we modified our breeding program in addition to uh, this regularity, precocity and dwarf stature. Uh, we included this objective of development of red peeled varieties and as a result of this in the year 2002 we released one uh, uh, hybrid Pusa Arunima. Pusa Arunima was there. And during that period, one more uh, variety was released that was in the name of Pusa Surya. But uh, remember, it should be very clear to you, in most of the literature I have seen that it is written like Pusa Surya is a selection. No, it is not a selection. It is only Elden which is released in the name of Surya. So uh, selection, when we will make selection, when we have different type of population, then only we can select. If it is only one, can you do selection? No. Like you recall in statistics, we are saying the degree of freedom. So it is n minus 1, because you can select only up to, if there are 10 entities, you can select up to 9. In the last, there will be only one, so you do not have any possibility to go for selection. You have to choose that one. So it is not a selection, it is a synonym of Eldon. Eldon was, re, uh, uh, so many uh, uh, exotic varieties have been evo uh, evaluated here and we found that uh, this uh, Eldon is performing better under North Indian condition and that can be released. So it was released in the name of Pusa Surya. So it is not a hybrid, it is not a selection, it is basically introduction and directly released in the name of Pusa Surya. And uh, in continuation to this, uh, in the year 2011, uh, four more varieties have been released from our institute. Uh, you can note down the name. Those who are from IRI, they all know. Uh, but uh, from other institute, uh, uh, it may be useful to you. Uh, one is Pusa Pratibha. It is a cross of Amrapali into sensation. Then Pusa Sreshtha is there. which is again cross of Amrapali into sensation. Then Pusa Pitambar is there, which is a cross of Amrapali into Lal Sundri. And Pusa Lalima, which is a cross of Dashehari into sensation. And during this convocation, last convocation, we proposed, our institute has identified two more mango hybrids for release and their names are Pusa, uh, Pusa Deep Shikha and Pusa Manohari. 
uh, you can even note down the genetic uh, entry number also. In case of Deep Sikha, it is hybrid 11 2. And in case of Manohari, it is 8 11, hybrid 8 11. Uh, this Manohari uh, is very important because uh, this is the only hybrid from our institute where we have observed that it is showing field tolerance for mango malformation. Otherwise, uh, uh, lots of breeding work is going on for development of mango malformation resistant mango, but uh, 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 most of the reports are suggesting that whenever they are crossing this Bhadauran or Elaichi, which is a resistant source for malformation with any commercial hybrid, all the prosnies are susceptible. So here you can imagine in this way, maybe some more work is required there. Suppose this, uh, uh, this you know that uh, the resistance is governed by a recessive gene here in case of mango malformation. And when we are crossing with a susceptible one, all are heterozygous. Suppose homozygous dominant and recessive homozygous in case of resistance. So when you will cross, what you will get in F1? It will be heterozygous. So heterozygous, what is dominant there? Which allele is? Allele of susceptibility is dominant there. So that's why all the prosnies are susceptible. So what we can do further? We have to select some F1 from these crosses and then go for back cross with the recessive homozygous, which is. So maybe this approach has not been attempted. Uh, it is uh, saying is very easy in case of mango, but doing is very difficult. So, but this is one area we can uh, do some sort of uh, hybridization work to develop a resistant, um, malformation resistant variety in case of mango. And uh, uh, in addition to this uh, biotechnological work, we are also work part of that. So initially we started with diversity analysis, then development of mapping population. Uh, here I want to emphasize one thing. I think I am taking much time on one slide. So I will, uh, all these things are given uh, later. So development of mapping population, then identification of some of the candidate markers, marker validation, whatever genomic data is there, our genome is published, uh, drop genome is published in case of mango. We have identified, our team has identified so many millions of SNPs and thousands of SSRs, but their validation is equally important whether they are working in mango or not. So that validation part we are doing. We are also part of uh, whole genome sequencing. Basically our leader is Dr. N. K. Singh. He delivered very good lecture yesterday on genomics. Then uh, uh, very recently I got one project from DBT for uh, genetic linkage mapping and QTL identification of QTL in case of mango. So it is part of our breeding program. Traditionally we were using these techniques, hybridization, introduction, selection, clonal selection, hybridization. One more thing I want to make clear uh, because some may be a student in MSc or PhD. There is a term, generally what we are saying in case of uh, fruit trees. Uh, that it is a clone of this, that is not a correct term. We are saying that the Shahri clone is the Shahri 51, but this is not a correct term. Correct term is it is the Shahri 51 is a clonal selection of, because clone means exactly identical. So whatever the Shahri plants you are propagating by way of vegetative means, they all are clones. Clones mean there should not be any deviation as far as the genetics or traits are concerned from the mother plant, provided there is no mutation, migration and whatever is there. But the right term is, it is a clonal selection. And then hybridization, here again I want to tell that hybridization as we are attempting in case of cereals and millets, it is different what we are attempting in case of perennial fruit trees. You know that for any in start of any hybridization program in cereals, first we are going for uh, hom making the parents homozygous. In case of self-pollinated crops, we are making pure lines. In case of cross-pollinated crops, we are making them inbreds. Then we are going for 
crossing and whatever F1 we are getting, they all are 100% heterozygous at the same time 100% homogeneous. But this type of thing we cannot do in case of perennial fruit trees. Here both of the parents are heterozygous. So taking homozygous or inbreds or pure lines or homozygous lines as parents, we can predict the segregation of the traits or genes in F, uh, in F2 population. But that we cannot do here because initially our parents are not homozygous. So we cannot predict the segregation. So truly speaking, it is a kind of hit in dark. We are making thousands of crosses with the expectation that some elite combination will come together, desirable traits will come together and that we will select from a bigger population. Otherwise predicting the segregation is quite difficult uh, as compared to cereals and millets where we are using inbreeds. Uh, these are photographs of our varieties which were released. This is Mallika, Amrapali, Surya is not a hybrid. Then Arunima, Sreist, Pusa Pitambar, Pusa Pratibha, Lalima. Uh, I told about Pusa Manohari, this one is Manohari. Uh, this is our uh, Deep Shikha. Just see the color of the fruit, attractiveness of the fruit. Uh, this information I want to tell you and uh, in all lectures in my department, I, I used to share this slide with, um, with my students. Why? Because I am happy to share. Why I am happy? Because our own varieties from IRI, how they are performing across the globe. Just see this literature is from USA. It is not from Indian person. What they have written? That Mallika is proposed as a suitable cultivar in various locations and climates throughout the America. This cultivar offers adaptability, production advantage and fruit quality. Most locations that have Alfonso trees in the Western Hemisphere have been unsuccessful. Yes, sir. Sir, unsuccessful due to lack of consistency. So here Mallika just see, I talked about adaptability, which is lacking narrow adaptability in case of Alfonso. But our own variety Mallika, it is not only performing equally good under our condition, but it is performing equally good in American country. So that is the thing. That type of variety should be there. And I am happy to share that this Mallika and Amrapali has been utilized by, as a parent in several breeding programs of Australia, Kenya, Brazil, USA. They have used our own Mallika and Amrapali and they have taken advantage of those uh, hybrids and included in their breeding program. Just see this, uh, some example of Brazil. Here, Mallika, they have taken as one of the parent, Alpha. Here, Lita is there, Amrapali is taken as well. So it means uh, this is, all these things can be concluded in such a way that our varieties are really good. And that's why people are utilizing. Uh, and this, uh, uh, I will come to genomics part also, but uh, this, these things I found that it is very interesting for you. So we, uh, our Indian mango has contributed in the development of uh, varietal wealth or augmentation of the varietal wealth of the uh, uh, world. And uh, if we talk about the Floridan mango varieties. Florida is now considered as secondary center of diversity in case of mango, but whatever varieties are there, the, there is one Indian mango variety which has contributed maximum to the development of Florida mango variety, and that is Malgoa. So long back it was ex, uh, imported by Americans from southern part of our country, and just see this uh, Hadden and Keith are first generation hybrids of open pollinated seedlings of Malgoa, then second generation open pollinated seedlings and this is the Irvin is third generation. So 
So uh, whatever hybridization work we started, we faced one problem. Uh, in case of mango, the recovery of a hybrid is very less. We are making thousands of crosses and hardly 1% or 2% hybrids we are retaining up to the maturity. So how to overcome this problem? Uh, because uh, uh, it is not like uh, uh, multiple seeded food that uh, from one food we can get more number. So we are, if we are making every year we are making 9,000 to 10,000 uh, flowers we are crossing and we are getting 50, 60, maximum 100 stones. So it is really very difficult to develop uh, a mapping population or prosny population where we can go for effective selection for the desirable traits. So uh, what we did that uh, we attempted this in vitro, uh, in vitro in ovulo culture. So what we are exactly doing here that we are harvesting the fruits at early stage of fruit development. Suppose today I have made the cross after 35 to 40 days, we will harvest the fruits and then we will go for maturation, artificial maturation of the embryos under in vitro conditions and it will take hardly 45 days for maturation. Then we will transfer in the germination medium and uh, si uh, 60 days uh, uh, normally matured embryos are taking for germination and by this way because if you talk about the retention of the hybrid fruitlets on the panicle it is quite high after 35 to 40 days as compared to what is retaining at the time of maturity. So we can increase 200, 300 times this hybrid recovery if we are going for in vitro in ovulo culture at early stage of the fruit development. So we have standardized the uh, media composition and all in vitro conditions for uh, this uh, ovule culture or embryo rescue of uh, mango hybrid. Then uh, we also worked on there is very old report that uh, uh, North Indian varieties are having this self incompatibility. So we also investigated this phenomena in our own varieties because Amrapali is most preferred female parent. So whether Amrapali is having and we found uh, there are certain indications that uh, Amrapali is also showing phenomena of self incompatibility. Mallika is also self incompatible but Surya and this Arunima is self compatible. So this we can this phenomena we can utilize. Uh, to reduce the tedious, uh, to, uh, uh, to have such type of varieties, female varieties where we do not need emasculation if it is a self incompatible. So that tedious job we are, we need not to do in case of self incompatible varieties. So Amrapali, uh, we are certain though we, uh, some more work is required to uh, confirm it, finally tell that uh, we can go without emas emasculation. But initial indications or research indications are there that it is a self incompatible and that phenomena can be utilized in hybrid production and we need not to go for emasculation. Uh, these are some data pertaining to fruit set data. Uh, whatever uh, markers uh, we, uh, this SSRs we identified from the genome data, around 1000 we validated and we screened for polymorphism between parental genotypes. Because here uh, at IRI we are taking Amrapali as a female parent and sensation as a male donor parent for imparting red peel color in the hybrid prosnies. So every time we are going for a tedious job of because the flower is tiny and uh, lots of work and time is required for pollination. Can we directly harvest from the tree and later we can uh, ascertain that this is a hybrid between this particular cross combination. So for that purpose we try to screen so many thousands of uh, SSRs and we only got 22 SSRs which can be directly used for ascertaining the hybridity of open pollinated seedlings. And that too from cross of Amrapali and sensation. It is not for all parental combination, but for Amrapali and sensation. Maybe some other uh, marker will be useful for other combinations. So here you see these two are parents. 
P1, P2, Amrapali and sensation and these are 94 hybrids. So out of 94 hybrids, we could ascertain the hybridity of more than 92 percent hybrids, around uh, 89 or 90 we could ascertain. So this is a very useful mark, 97 percent we could uh, uh, ascertain. So these are some of the details of uh, means coding of those markers and here how many uh, prosnies which were developed, it is not a random prosny. It is, uh, these prosnies were obtained from design breeding program from cross of Amrapali into sensation. Just to validate it, what polymorphic uh, SSRs we are getting between these two parental genotypes, can they be utilized for ascertaining the hybridity. So initially we took our own hybrids where we were sure that it is a hybrid between Amrapali and sensation and this type of result we got. Then we utilize this, these markers for ascertaining the hybridity from open pollinated seedlings. So uh, presently we have more than 500 half sips of uh, Amrapali and uh, we attempted on 100 only and we found that out of 100 only 12 are cross of Amrapali into sensation. So by this way we, we, uh, we, uh, we reach to this point that these markers are really useful and uh, if we are going like this we can develop population very easily in a fast manner. Otherwise using traditional methodologies it is very time taking job in case of perennial fruit tree like mango. Uh, we also identified some SSRs for differentiation of zygotics from the new cellars. Then uh, uh, some of the markers we identified having a very good association with the alternate bearing trait. So we did uh, uh, phenotyping for uh, uh, biennialty in case of mango, then genotyping using SSRs and uh, uh, association mapping using this genotyping and phenotyping data. And these are some of the markers which are, but their validation part is, is still pending. We could not validate because of lack of resources or uh, human, uh, means human resource. So, uh, but we will be doing in near future, uh, whatever markers we have, uh, uh, we have identified that, that have association with this uh, yield traits or uh, alternate bearing, this would be validated in a population. Uh, this is another uh, very interesting thing I want to share that uh, we found some sort of correlation between peel color and the petal color 24 hours after anthesis. If you go for 72 hours, the color will change, but this is for 24 hours after anthesis. So initially we found we, uh, we uh, uh, did uh, regression uh, analysis and correlation analysis with 10 varieties of colored and green and we got very good uh, uh, correlation value more than uh, uh, 0.8 this R square value. But when we attempted on more than 50 genotypes belonging to color this correlation reduced. So that is why this, came, this thing came in our mind that uh, uh, no this may not be that much uh, good uh, selection criteria for red peel color. But if we will keep on doing this thing, maybe some other, uh, we will reach to some other point and uh, we can exactly know whether this trait is associated with this peel color or not. Now development of mapping population, we have full SIPs, full SIPs of means biparental prosny population of Amrapali and sensation and presently we have more than 250 from this cross and around 70 from other different cross. Half sip population of Mallika and Amrapali, 500 half sips of Amrapali and 170 from Mallika. And in addition to this, we have very good exotic and indigenous mango germplasm, around 150 we have. So uh, many of you may be asking this thing, can we use F1 population as mapping population? No, answer is no in general. 
but I will justify that it can be. Yeah, because uh, you know that F2, F2 derived F3, reals, nails, all these things are used for fine mapping. Uh, you go for reals, nails, then for fine mapping. You can uh, go for crude mapping using F2 population. But that uh, development of rails, nails or F2 derived F3 or back cross crosses in case of perennial fruit trees is quite difficult because it needs lots of time and that is not possible. The only thing is that we can go for such type of thing when we have double haplides technique. So we can make the directly homozygous then we can cross them and we can develop the progenies. But here F1 can also be used as mapping population up to some extent. It is not very good for fine mapping but maybe useful for crude mapping. So how it is, just uh, this, this is uh, data from our biparental prosny population and we have uh, genotype using 82,000 SNPs and those 82,000 SNPs are uh, means they are related with around 16,000 genes in case of fruit trees. So we have genotyped our uh, and we got this type of combination in parents. So for some of the locus, both are heterozygous. In some of the locus, one parent is heterozygous, another one is homozygous. The uh, vice versa means this one is heterozygous. I think uh, incorrectly I mentioned here. This is heterozygous, this is homozygous. Then one condition is it is homozygous for both of the alleles, both parents. So what type of segregation we can get here? So if we are only selecting those locus or those SNPs which have indicated heterozygous in both of the parents, it is expected that whatever F1 we are generating out of that and they, they will segregate in this ratio. 1 is to 2 is to 1 ratio. And wherever this type of combination is there, they will segregate in 1 is to 1, like test cross. And here, it is least useful for mapping, argentic linkage mapping, if it is homozygous, both way. So, out of 82,000 SNPs, we could reduce it to 14,000 only, which are exactly following this pattern. So, at least not for all taking information of all the 82,000 SNPs, we are only using those locus which are expected to give the segregation ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1 and 14,000 is very good number because whatever genetic linkage map has been published in case of mango, hardly 2,000, 3,000 SNPs they have taken. Uh, very recently in uh, 2018, one genetic linkage map was uh, uh, published uh, by uh, USDA people, uh, Dr. Kuhn is there and they have reported only 798 SNPs, markers for, uh, across all 20 linkage groups. So that I will be showing. So uh, these two slides I, I purposefully I kept here to show you that no, F1 can also because our parents were heterozygous. Uh, just see what I told that uh, all type of combinations are there. Just see, it is, uh, these are duplicates of uh, one parent, duplicates of second parent. So concentrate on this, it is AG and it is AZ, means it is heterozygous in both of the parent. So we can expect that whatever prosnies are there, they may segregate in 1 is to 2 is to 1 ratio. Now I will come to this point that uh, there was dearth of information as far as genome resources are concerned. So I, uh, I will share this information which I, I uh, retrieved on 3rd November 2016. And that time this was the only 
1714 ESTs were reported, this much protein sequences, this much nucleotide sequences and that to all these ESTs were more related with the ripening phenomena, not from other metabolic uh, processes, physiological processes or uh, plant growth processes. But uh, in last 7-8 uh, years, lots of uh, development has uh, been uh, means taken, uh, uh, happened in case of mango and now we are in a position means Indian scientists are in a position to, uh, to publish the whole genome sequence of mango. So initially what they did, they, they did uh, RNA sequencing of leaf of Amrapali, Neelam and Dasheri and these are the statistics of all those uh, RNA sequencing and uh, then they, they, as uh, they assembled all these information together means wherever there was commonality of the reads that has been taken care of and we, they reached to this type of NDA assembly. And this information was utilized for development of SSRs and SNPs initially. Then whole genome sequencing came in picture and uh, you know that for us these type of work you need money. Once you are funded you can do everything but if you do not have money you cannot do anything. So luckily, uh, our institute and, uh, means ICR has started funding us and they have given huge money for this, 200 crores around. If I talk about the total cost of this, it is not less than 150 crores from all institute, all uh, those who are involved in this. So these are the details of all sequencing NGS uh, technologies used for whole genome sequencing and their genome coverage is there. And as a result of this, in the year 2014, during one, uh, uh, one uh, conference was there at San Diego, that is a, a plant animal genome conference was there. And this first draft was report, means published there. It was reported there. But there were several problems with this whole genome sequence because whatever genome size was reported, it was more than the expected one. Maybe some problem with the sequencing technology was there or there are repetitive reasons are there. So, uh, and the, the biggest problem with this genome assembly was that it was having very less coverage. So it was only 70x something like that was there. So then they supplemented this data with uh, PAC bio uh, sequencing and they published uh, in 2016, again in the same conference at San Diego, they published uh, uh, an improved version of genome, um, genome assembly of Amrapali. But uh, the story means there is no end. Now, uh, there are so many gaps in that assembly. So how to fill that? For that, uh, we tried uh, some sort of uh, transcriptome information from different developmental stages of the mango. So RNA sequencing of uh, tissue specific RNA sequencing was done to fill that gap. And then uh, one very advanced technology is bio nano is there. So that has been utilized for uh, getting a bigger context and uh, those gaps were filled. And hopefully uh, Dr. N.K. Singh has given this assignment to all the team members that by 31st we have to send our publication for uh, in some journal. So hopefully in this in coming year by, by the beginning of uh, 2021 you may find one mango genome publication from India. Uh, these are the statistics of Amrapali genome which was uh, and Dr. S. N. K. Singh discussed lots about this thing. So and uh, if you compare the, all the gene models, uh, this mango with other gene models which are available in uh, genome resource databases, it is showing more uh, proximity or similarity with the citrus sinensis. And the reason is that uh, from other crop species from this Anacardiaceae family is not available in the genome database. That's why it is showing from citrus. It may be possible that tomorrow if some more uh, gene models will be there, then it may show affiliation with some other uh, 
model. Uh, lots of uh, SSRs and SNPs have been uh, predicted from this uh, genome data and our job was from division of fruits and horticulture technology, our job was to validate all the SSRs which have been obtained from this genome data. So we did this and we have completed 650, around 650 SSRs we have validated. Uh, this is another a good achievement as far as genome resources are concerned. The DD rat sequencing of 91 mango genotypes from our own repository here, they identified around 1.6 million SNPs and people from ISRI, they have developed a database of SNPs. So that can be used by any person across the globe and that is really very good information. You visit this site and this is based on the DD rat sequencing of 91 mango genotypes and uh, around 1.67 million SNPs. So, and this is free for everyone. Then another achievement uh, based on the genomics is development of uh, 80,000 this SNP gene chip is there and the platform is Fematrix platform we are using. Gene Titan is the equipment where we are doing all these things, genotyping. So here the unique thing is that in three, in, uh, uh, in a period of one week only, you can genotype minimum 96 varieties for 80,000 SNPs. Otherwise, you imagine if you are doing from traditional ways, it may take two, three years to complete for 80,000. So in a fraction of days, means uh, just, uh, just in one week you can complete. So this type of high throughput genotyping technology is going to be very useful for further studies which may help in the improvement of mango industry. So here, some of the genes which are single copy mango genes are there and some are conjured single copy genes are there. They are very useful for phylogenetic analysis, all those things in case of mango. Uh, in addition to this, uh, in the year 2016, Chinese uh, uh, group, they have published genetic linkage map. They have used the popu this population uh, uh, from Jing Wang and Irwin, and they use 7,000 uh, specific locus amplified fragment uh, markers, and uh, they could uh, uh, produce the genetic linkage map ha having 20 linkage groups, and it is a very robust and very good genetic linkage map published till date. Even whatever is published in 2018 by Kun group, American group, that is not that much dense and uh, good as it is. So we are also taking help of this uh, to, to align our markers with this uh, genetic linkage map. Then second uh, report is uh, uh, from Kuhn group from America and they have taken several populations, just see, crosses, cell pollen. And uh, the interesting part of this genetic linkage or uh, genomics study from the American group is that they could establish, they could uh, establish that polyembryonic trait is available on linkage group means chromosome number eight. Somewhere it is on chromosome number eight. Even they could go for, uh, uh, they found very good association for traits like branching habit, bloom, ground, skin color, blush intensity, beak shape, pulp color. So they identified some of the SNPs showing very good association for these traits and that can be further utilized for mango breeding, mango improvement program. So this is the paper which they published in Frontier Sciences and just see they, they whatever genetic linkage map is that is finally that is based on 726 only. So ho we are happy because we, we have more than 10,000 SNPs and our genetic linkage map will be very dense and robust than what is already published here. 
And just see, they have given some association for uh, different traits. And this is very interesting paper. Those who are from horticulture or from breeding uh, subject, they should go for this paper. At least you should go through this paper. It is very, very good paper as far as mango is concerned. Now, we have also started working on genetic linkage map and uh, QTL identification. We are looking for these traits, carbohydrate profile. So here, sucrose, glucose, and what else? Fructose. We are uh, targeting these three sugars. In case of organic acids, we are targeting uh, five organic acids. Citric acid is dominant acid, malic acid, succinic acid, pyruvic acid, and ascorbic acid. Then beta carotene content is there, firmness, fruit shape, peel color, pulp color. And just see, this is a prosny population of, I could not insert all the images from population, but just to show you, just to depict it, that what type of variation we are getting. So this is Amrapali, this is sensation. And just see the shape of the fruit. Lots of variation is there. Even pulp color is, there is lots of variation. So our population is, we, uh, we did lots of uh, statistical analysis to ascertain this, that whatever population we are going to use for this QTL mapping, whether that is uh, having the significant variation uh, that can be utilized for QTL mapping or not. If there is significant variation for those traits and they are contrasting uh, these parents are contrasting for that particular trait. Those traits we are targeting here for QTL mapping. Uh, all those uh, uh, hybrid prosnies along with parents, they have been genotyped using this 82K uh, SNP gene chip. And this is the data and some matrix is there that we miss call that is not of your use. And uh, we did lots of uh, phenotyping work uh, for different traits. And uh, some of the slides just simply I'm showing that uh, what type of phenotyping tra uh, traits we are uh, working as far as phenotyping is concerned. So just see the variation in the population. Uh, this is very interesting because aroma is a very important aspect uh, trait in case of mango, so we are trying to find out that what compound or combination of compounds are there which is responsible for that sweet aromatic, um, sweet aroma of mango. So we could identify some of the compounds, but uh, we need uh, some more work to reach uh, to some conclusion and the work is going on. So these are some of the challenges. I could complete on time or not? Yes, on time. They go kitna 10.30. So these are some of the challenges. Uh, the biggest challenge is now we have lots of advanced uh, technologies available, whether it is available with us or with some group in some other country for genomics study. But how we can utilize all these information for the improvement of, suppose I am telling that this particular marker is a candidate marker uh, and it is having high association with particular trait of importance. So how we can use this information? Of course, we want to transfer that particular from some uh, species to our desired species, targeted species. And it is, if it is not available in our uh, mango germplasm, then we, we have to go for transgenic approach. But the problem with this mango is that we do not have any regeneration protocol for mango. So all these information will limit to the laboratory or to the literature if we cannot go for utilizing this by taking the help of uh, this uh, transgene transfer technology or uh, transgenics. So this is the regeneration uh, protocol development or standardization of the uh, protocol is very much necessary. The only hope is that uh, in case of mango, somatic hybridization is, was successful up to some extent. 
people were able to develop the somatic hybrids but there is very uh, there is a problem when they are going for germination of all those so we have to work on that so that we have regeneration protocol and whatever information we are generating by way of genomics studies that can be translated in a way uh, in terms of pro product development then uh, lack of gene sources are there in planta transformation is one way which can be used in case of mango uh, agrobacterium mediated transformation technique is there where we are going through callus culture but in planta is a new technology where we are uh, trans uh, transformation is done using the entire seedling there we are not taking a callus or cell we are using a whole seedling so that type of thing can be and it was uh, successfully demonstrated in some of the crop species like uh, this uh, pigeon pea from nrcpb uh, uh, dr one rohini is there and she has demonstrated this in planta technique in case of pigeon pea and then uh, development of double haploid is another very good fruit quality and good qualities of amrapali we are uh, taking that as a female parent that there may be there may be it should not be done in my opinion uh, it should be released uh, in the name of elder only but uh, this happened uh and this happened because we recommended for north indian conditions so we have given the name using our pusa term means pusa there otherwise it should be released in the name of elden for north india because it is not a selection from uh, some population it is directly we have released elden in the name of pusa so no no once you are modifying if you are directly utilizing any genetic entry then there will be problem you can take advantage of that better uh, genetic entry for the further improvement of that so you are not directly releasing that variety suppose cant or sensation we are utilizing in our breeding program it is not directly we are uh, releasing sensation or cant or tommy atkins but we are transferring some of the important traits of these varieties in our amrapali so we we are taking advantage of those traits in that particular so th there will not be any problem if we are really releasing tommy atkins directly in the name of pusa something then there will be problem thank you okay i know you will enjoy this lecture i know So uh, our next speaker is here. Before we start, I request Dr. S.K. Singh sir to kindly felicitate Dr. Manish. <laughs> 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 Thank you, sir. Many advantages, sir. Why? 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 and we are not going to do whatever we are doing here it is under the supervision of sir okay. sir kadiya sir bhatia dikha do okay okay